Thank you. Thank you, Boaz. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm hoping I'm not going to stay too long between you and lunch, so let's, let's see if we can move this along. I uh, really appreciate uh, being here today. So, yeah, I'm the founder and CEO of Energy Sage. Uh, some of you are familiar with us. Uh, but in terms of our discussion today, what I'm planning to do is give you a quick one minute introduction of Energy Sage, talk about some of the key trends that we are seeing in the industry, which are, which are based on the research and data that we collect. And specifically, I'll walk through some of the key findings of our consumer research. We just finished our solar installer survey in Q4, just launched it day after the elections. Uh, and we also publish a semi-annual data report, which we call our Marketplace Intel report, which reports on uh, trends that we are seeing in our marketplace. And last but not the least, would love to open up uh, some of the time for Q&A. And would love to hear about uh, what, what does it mean for the solar industry? We'd love to hear from you. Is there anything that you heard in this, uh, in this presentation? Did it surprise you? Did it confirm your hunches? Or was it against the uh, belief that you've had? So I'd love to, love to hear about those things. So that said, let me just jump in. As some of you know, Energy Sage is sometimes referred to as the kayak of solar. We are the leading online marketplace for both rooftop and community solar uh, systems at this point. Our offering is essentially broken into two parts. One is our content. We have the most comprehensive, objective library of solar content anywhere on the web. Uh, plus our online marketplace, which allows consumers to compare quotes from multiple pre-screen contractors. All the quotes are displayed online in a standardized format for apples to apples comparison. Uh, we have excellent partners. We are referred to or recommended by over 50 very prominent organizations. Uh, utilities like National Grid, state organizations like Go Solar California, uh, the state of Connecticut, uh, companies like Staples, Schneider Electric, etc. So we are that trusted brand, trusted destination site for folks to research and shop for solar. So that said, I'm going to talk about some of the trends that we are seeing. And of course, this is just a small smattering of those. They, we could always talk more more trends. And some of these may resonate with you. The first thing, which is very obvious, is there's a very large pool of solar interested prospects out there. But even with this large pool, a lot of these prospects still remain skeptical about solar. Consumers are, customers are like consumers. They have different needs. They have different preferences. They value things differently. And because they value things differently, this, they are starting to behave much like shoppers. As solar is becoming much more mass market, people are behaving like shoppers. They want to know what their options are, how these options compare, uh, what's, what's good and what's not good. Related to that, we are starting to definitely see a balance of power is now shifting towards more local installation companies, which is great news. Uh, but at the same time, there's an increasing competition for customers. So these are some of the trends, and I'd love to hear from you what you are seeing from this data. So these trends we basically extracted from a number of research and surveys that we conduct throughout our, um, on an ongoing basis. The first is industry analysis. We look at data from publicly traded solar companies. We do a lot of consumer research. Uh, some of the research results that I'm going to share with you, we did a survey of about 3,000 households in 2015. We, last year, we did a survey of about 300 of our own customers, why they are making the decisions they are making. And we do an ongoing one-on-one -on -one focus groups with our customers. Our Marketplace Intel report is a uh, results of tens of thousands of quotes that are submitted through our platform, uh, decisions that consumers make. So we'll share data from that. And as I mentioned, we just completed our second annual solar installer survey. We got 360 respondents thanks to uh, uh, efforts from Bewa, from Enphase, from Calcia, PV Magazine, and of course our own solar installer network. So all of the, and some of these reports you can download from our website at energysage.com slash data. So in terms of consumer research, what we, what we are seeing is that at least in 2015, we estimated that there were about 12 million households that were interested in solar. Of those 12 million households, roughly four to six million of them were actively shopping for solar. So they were engaged, they were getting quotes, they were talking to solar installation companies. But a much larger portion, five to seven million of them, 
while they were interested in solar, they were not actively engaged in solar. They were, not, they were standing on the sidelines. And we asked them, what would make you consider solar? And I think the answer was very, very interesting that they did not want to talk to a solar installation company as their first step in their solar journey. They wanted to do their own research, collect the information. Think about if you walk into Best Buy, you're looking to buy a flat screen TV, do you walk to the salesperson right away or do you do your homework before walking into Best Buy, want to know what options are out there, how they compare, and then get your questions ready and go and talk to the salesperson, right? So I think these are, this is a very big market I think that is, that is available for us today. I think if you look at 2017, this number is much larger. Uh, we know there are one and a quarter million households who have installed solar. These households have friends, neighbors, uh, people just driving by. Uh, they're all seeing solar go up and they're, they're starting to get interested. So I think the pool of households is getting bigger. But our concern is that only very small percentage, five to eight percent of active shoppers actually end up going solar. So there's a very, very large population that thinks about solar but doesn't go, about, go uh, and actually install solar. And we'll talk about what other data we found. The other interesting thing that we found in 2015 was we looked at the six publicly traded solar companies. Together, those six companies alone spent a billion and a half dollars in 2015 marketing and selling solar. In 2015, it was, I think there were $7 billion in residential solar installations. So that's a big number uh, to get that $7 billion in sales. And of course, the other solar installation companies also spent some money, right? maybe tens of millions of dollars, so big money. But the other thing that we found was that this advertising spend, this marketing and advertising spend was only influencing about 30% of the prospective consumers. So of that four to six million consumers, when you ask why did, what was your first step? Where, where did this idea of going solar come from? Only 30% of them said they were influenced by the advertising and marketing done by the solar company. 70% of them founded what we call pull marketing. So community involvement, maybe their town was running uh, a solarized program, maybe their employer suggested looking into solar, uh, their nonprofit was uh, encouraging them to think about solar. Personal recommendations, again, no surprise, their friends and family are going solar. News media, there is no day that goes by when you don't see dozens of articles about solar in your local newspaper. Sorry, uh, are you gonna share this presentation? Happy to share. <laughs> Happy to share, yeah. And last but not the least, I think we are now in the 2017, right? Internet searches, we all get a lot of our news and information from the internet. So what, what I think maybe some takeaway from us is, yes, there is a big value in advertising and selling, uh, directly reaching the consumer, knocking on doors, cold calling, sending them flyers but there are a lot of other trusted ways to reach the consumer and get them interested uh, in solar. And I also mentioned that these consumers are not all made equal. They don't have the, the same uh, needs and preferences. When consumers sign up to shop for solar on Energy Sage, we ask them a few questions. One of the questions we ask them is, what kind of solar panels are you interested in? Uh, about 50% of them say they're looking for best value. And I bet you if you ask these consumers what best value means, they don't know that, right? Uh, about 18% and then 16% said they're looking for maximized production or the most <coughs> advanced technology. Only 3% said attractive panels, which surprises me actually. I, I, I would have thought that this was gonna be a bigger number. And 18% of course had no preference. When we asked them about solar financing, what are they looking for? 63% of them say they're looking for a solar loan. Only 8% actually said that they have a specific interest in solar leases and PPAs. And by the time they actually transact, less than 10% of our customers end up choosing uh, solar leases and PPAs. This is the other interesting thing that we, because we had an online platform, we usually like to ask our consumers, would you like a site visit before you get a quote or would you like to get a quote first before getting a site visit? No surprise there, I think a lot of consumers, they want information before they fully engage with solar installation companies. And I'll, you'll hear this over and over for me, I think information and transparency may be one of the key to unlocking the, the huge solar potential uh, in the future. So that was our consumer research slides. Anything that stands out, any questions that I can answer before I move on to our 
solar installer survey? No? OK. So just as a reminder, the solar installers, 360 respondents uh, from around the country. And one of the questions we asked, what is your primary business? About, so the blue and the green is essentially, we do this annually. Uh, the blue is the 2015 data, and the green is the 20, or whatever the color is, 2016 data. About 60% of them said their primary line of business is solar installation. The surprising number that we saw this year was that 11% of them said they are now 100%. They're pretty much focused on solar sales. Uh, there is, there we are hearing that some installation companies are now focusing exclusively on installations only and letting somebody else do the sales. But we are also seeing other, other professional contractors like electricians, HVAC, general contractors, roofing contractors now starting to come into the solar industry. In terms of their size, the chart on the left, uh, and these, this data is all available online. We can, you can download these reports. Uh, about half of them were doing more than 500 kilowatts in a year, the other half doing less than that. In terms of commercial, this was a very, very big range. Some of the installation companies were at zero, and others were over 100 megawatts. This was an interesting chart. We asked them, what are your plans for the next couple of years? And actually, some of you may have actually answered this survey. Uh, so we asked them, what, is, what are your plans for the future? Half of them basically said they want to stay local, they want to serve their current markets, remain in their own state. But the other half actually have expansion plans. They want to expand into contiguous states, non-contiguous states, and even think about going national. So I think you, you'll see uh, there's some additional interesting data that if you combine there, it will be interesting to see. Sorry about this one, this is a little tough to read. We asked them, what products and services are you offering today? And what are you planning to, order, uh, planning to offer in the future? And the purple actually says, we used to offer and we're not offering anymore. So no surprise here. I think what, what you're going to start seeing is the, the biggest one that is most attractive, and I think the morning sessions talked about this, is this, solar st energy storage. Almost 60% of them are offering storage today and 16% of them are suggesting that they will offer it in the next, in 2017. So one of the biggest numbers, but also we are seeing that because these are diversifying, these companies are now diversifying, they are looking to provide energy efficiency audits, energy efficiency upgrades, elect electric car charging stations, O&M services, et cetera. So solar installers are looking to be more diversified in their business going forward. The next few slides are about financing options. And again, I don't think you'll find this too, too surprising here. We asked them how many of their customers choose a third party option. This number was interesting. 75% of them said, we don't even offer TPOs anymore. That number was 50% in 2015. Uh, and they basically, there was a significant drop in every other category of offering TPOs. So he said, so how, how else are they financing? Are you offering equipment back loans or mortgage back loans? Uh, Definitely a much bigger jump in equipment back loans. As you can see, 22% of their customers, or 22% of the respondents said more than 50% of their customers are now using equipment back loans. So these are groups like Dividend, SunGage, Mosaic, CPI, uh, Spruce, et cetera. Uh, while mortgage back loans became a little bit less attractive. I think it could be a fact that the Title I loans have kind of gone away uh, from 2015 to 2016, so that could have been the reason uh, why this, this mix has changed. And the rest, actually, about almost 45% of the installers suggested that uh, cash, is, cash is king for them. Most of their customers buy, buy systems for cash. Next couple of slides uh, about customer acquisition. So in, we asked them, has con customer acquisition become easier, remain the same, or become more difficult for you in 2016? And as you can see, about in 2015 versus 2016, customer acquisition seems to have become a little bit more difficult uh, for some of our installers. And one of the reasons might be this, this data. So we asked them, how many quotes are your customers seeing? Only 10% or less actually said that their customers are seeing one quote only. 50% of their customers are seeing at least three quotes or more. So that that, again, goes back to the trend that we were seeing, that consumers are becoming shoppers. They want to look at their options. But when we look at our Energy Sage data, 
one thing that we find is that more shopping and more quotes actually means more conversions. There's a direct correlation between the number of quotes consumers see and the percentage of time they convert. So consumers who get just one quote, they close at less than 10% of the time. And consumers who see five quotes or more, the conversion rates can be anywhere from 30% to 40%, depending on the market. So actually, your competitors are helping you close more sales and bring the customer acquisition cost down. But it is not the race to the bottom. Uh, and I'll share more data about what, what consumers are looking for. What we find is that consumers are not looking for the cheapest price or the cheapest quality equipment. Think about all of us. Some of us buy Mercedes versus Hondas or Kias. Each of us is right. As long as we understand what value we are buying, we are willing to pay the price for it. So we asked the installers, what are their biggest challenges in closing sales? And the number one reason was a real, it's not a total surprise, we were hearing about this anecdotally, but this was mind boggling, just to hear from installers that their competitors are actually hurting sales. 53% of the installers said their competitors are creating confusion and lowering consumer confidence. As I mentioned, consumers, consumers who are shopping for solar are doing it for the first time, right? They don't know much about solar. So if you go in and say, hey, solar edge is bad or Enphase is bad or whatever, it not only hurts the competitor, it actually hurts you. We have a lot of times consumers call us and they tell us that, that one installer is saying one thing and the other one is saying the other thing. They cannot trust either at this point. And they are, they kind of get, get, get they, they basically scrunch up. They're like, I'm not ready to make a decision because I think I'm gonna make a wrong decision. They don't know what, what the right decision is. So they're looking for a neutral arbiter at that point to make this. So if, if there is one thing that we could maybe agree as, a, as an industry to grow the industry, to grow the market and increase the conversions, is maybe something, uh, if you can do something about this. And I guess you guys are in the best position to think about what, what the right things might be. But the other, others, I think, are pretty, pretty consistent where consumers, of course, it's a high cost purchase. Consumers don't know a lot about solar, so it takes a long time to educate consumers about solar. Lack of financing is huge. Um, and competitors offering lower prices, it is definitely in the top five, but it is not the most important reason why solar installers lose sales. We asked them, what is your competitive advantage? Why should a consumer do business with you versus your competitor? 2015 versus 2016, a lot of consistency. The top four kind of remains the same. The, for the first time, we actually saw that lower prices is actually, installers are now thinking about offering lower prices to get uh, to close more sales. But then when, you, when we ask consumers, why did you choose an installer? So there's a little bit of, we can go back and forth on these, these reasons. Installers are saying, these are the reasons why we are better. But when consumers are thinking price and financing option, we're very much tied. I think affordability is key. Consumers want to make sure they can afford. It's a big ticket item and they can finance it at the right. So that was the number one reason why they ended up selecting an installer. Recommended by somebody I trust. Again, I bet there's no surprise in this room. That was the number two reasons. Number two reason. Local to me, this was a surprise to us. A lot of consumers are very focused on supporting companies that are located in their market or their neighborhood or within their geography. They're very interested to know where, where they are. Who's offering the right equipment quality may not be the best, but the right for their use, for their purpose. Reputation and reviews, again, no surprise. And warranties. So uh, I think some of you have mentioned that that is one of, their, one of your competitive advantages. A Couple other things about the state of the industry, where we believe the industry is gonna go. We asked them, do you think large installers are gonna win out or the long tail installers are gonna win out? 54% uh, said, yeah, they think smaller installers will gain more market share in the future. In term, terms of number of installers, over half the installers said they, they believe there will be more installers in the future. So competition may, may actually increase. This is one of my favorite questions we ask. So what are you thinking about? What is your strategy? Are you focused on gaining market share or are you focused on maximizing your gross margins? And this is actually, we, we shortened the, uh, the tabs a little bit, the, the titles. It's basically you're, winning, you're, you're willing to go after market share by 
but willing to compromise on margins. Here it was, no, I'm willing to only increase my margins and willing to compromise volumes. So there was a, there was a real um, choice we gave them. Slight shift, but 60% of installers basically responded they are looking to grow their market share and willing to compromise on margin if that's what it takes to get there. Uh, last chart on this uh, from our survey, we asked them how confident you are. We added this question at the last minute because as I mentioned, we launched this survey on the morning of November 9th. Uh, so wanted to know what, what their thoughts were. So the survey was done between November 9th and about I think end of December. Uh, generally pretty positive, uh, as you can see. Uh, only the purple was much less confident. So you could see a, most installers actually said they are, they remain very confident. They, either their confidence level has not changed or they have become more confident in the solar industry. So that is, that is really good to hear. Before I go on to the next uh, set of slides, any thoughts, questions, or surprises? So I'm a little disturbed by this by this decision between, uh, yeah, that, yeah, you knew where I was going. <laughs> that disturbs me greatly mm -hmm. um, because people who are going after gaining market share because, you know, I'll just make it up in volume are not going to be around in a few years. And that's going to continue to damage the industry. <coughs> what, do you, what do you see there in terms of impacts? I mean, you know, from your perspective, looking at all this data. Yeah. Actually, there is a follow-on question that we did to this is to say, what are you thinking of doing here? Well, that will help you gain market share, and what will help you gain more margins? Uh, I don't have a slide on that, actually. That would have been a good slide to, to actually share, please. I could just speak from coming from a, like a California market moving into a different market. In order to make it work in that market, you have to do a smaller margin. So I think probably that into that uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, just 4% uh, shifts that's uh, significant enough to make conclusions based on your survey? No. no, no I would not that's say that's the other thing I'm just saying is somewhat a wash. It might be trending, but it's yeah. not really some dramatic change. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if there is a trend here, but I think there is definitely a, there is, call it half the industry is focused on market share growth and half the industry is focused on uh, margin growth. And that could be by, sorry. Uh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I was just gonna say, this also phrases a really complex topic in a very binary way, right? Um, uh, one installer might be thinking, well, I can't increase gross margins, prices are falling, right? And my overhead's rising. So I'm, I'm you know, I guess I'll choose market share, right? Or, or uh, um, my margins are fine. I'm not going to increase them right now. I'm going to focus on growth, right? So there's there's some nuance here in how nuance. a choice might have been made. It, I don't think it, it it should imply, Pam, for example, that I'm willing to lose money to gain market share indefinitely. I, I don't think that's <coughs> what this question is saying. No, that is not what this question is saying. Absolutely, that that's a great point. And I think when you talk to the installers and say, we ask them, so what are you planning to do to gain market share versus g increase margins? Uh, I, actually, the answers were quite similar. The more specialization, more investment in high quality customer acquisition, uh, maybe outsourcing labor. Outsourcing labor was one of the, the biggest uh, response for both of these, uh, uh, these, these questions, these choices. So I can follow up and maybe share with you what those responses were. Uh, Could we maybe have a, a, a raise of hands within the room on these preferences? Oh, that would be great. So, number one. <laughs> Which is gain, huh? lose money to gain market. Like roughly half an hour. I'm not losing money. Yeah. It's the, the option is not lose money. Yeah, the option is not lose money. You're losing money if you're not going to get market share. Nowhere up there does it say. Nowhere up there does it say to lose money. Yeah. Right. It says I see sacrifice sub margin. Sub margin, exactly. So if you've got right. yep. that margin and you scale it back to gain share, yep. it's still growth. It's yep. rational. And I think you guys may be in a better position to say, yeah, if I increase my margin, do some of my costs go down? Or sorry, increase my volume, do some of my costs go down? That will allow me to become more competitive and relevant in the long term. Uh, I think for every business, even for us, this is a very big question. Right? 
every business has to think about how do I make sure that I'm relevant in the next five years or 10 years? So that's why we, we asked this question, but love to get your feedback on how to maybe change this uh, question in the future. I, I really liked the, uh, the push in the whole marketing, yep. and I'm, I'm just wondering your opinion. Um, what, we, what we found from 2015 to 2016 is we felt like the massive uh, push marketing from the, net, the national solar companies acted as pull marketing for us because yes. it would get people interested if they'd be turned off by the push and they would reach out to other local installers. Almost 30% of our customers who sign up on Energy Sage, sorry, too many slides. Uh, I'm not walking you through all of these. Uh, they basically, 30% of them have said that they had a quote already from a solar city, a Sunrun, a Sungevity, et cetera. So, sure. I recently on a uh, sitcom, the phone rings and the, and the person says, oh, don't, don't answer that, it's just another solar uh, salesperson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is something to it. I, somebody has put my name in the in the mailing in the call list for every solar in, installation company, so I, I'm on the receiving end of that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's my mistake. Your data about customers are coming from New York customers. They are not national average. Sorry. So that, I mean, your data about customers, the solar customers, are coming from people interested to go on new websites to purchase solar. No, no, no. This is, uh, no, some, most of this data is, as I mentioned, it's not just our customers. We definitely produce, so the next section that I'm gonna share with you, this section, this is our data. Okay. Yeah, but this is from multiple different sources um, uh, that, we, that we have. Cool. Yeah, I think one of, my, one of my hope is that we could make our sales funnel as an industry broader and fatter. I'm achieving that in my personal life, but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I would like to do that in, for the solar industry, because the fun funnel is really narrow, right? We have these many people who start, but only so many actually fall through. How do we? I was there one last thing, you had a slide where you had six quotes of 30%, but isn't that the same sales funnel for me? Because I just competed with five other people. So in essence, there's the same kind of similar amount of legwork. Yeah, there's a little bit difference. I think uh, there's a little bit difference. I think you can achieve that with a very, with much little effort on your part. Uh, I think what one, one question as we shared with you is, consumers want to see the quote first. Right now, I think some of the solar companies have done is they will get on the phone with a the customer, they will ask them 10 questions before giving any pricing information, right? That can be a turn off, it increases the cost for you. You may actually do a site visit before giving a quote. What we are saying is I think you can actually, if you bring prices and make them more transparent, you can prospect with a much larger volume of customers and still maintain your close rates and reduce your cost. Right. So this is the data from our marketplace platform. As I mentioned, we have a lot of quotes coming through our platform, transactions, we, we track consumer behavior, what is consumer looking at, why they're making the decision, et cetera. Uh, so one thing that we see is there's a huge price dispersion. This is a national graph, uh, no surprise here. Solar is a very local market. Northeast is very expensive, west is cheaper, south is actually the cheapest. Uh, but the fact is that solar prices vary dr dramatically. Uh, so there's a huge, huge price dispersion. This data is for the first half of 2016. We are about to publish our second half of 2016 report. There's a 5% decline. I believe right now we're looking at 322 to 314, I believe in terms of average gross cost. Um, so prices are definitely declining much faster in the second half of 2016. You guys know better than, uh, better than anybody there. Uh, we also report on what the market share of different panel brands is. Uh, this is uh, over two year time period. No surprise, LG is, um, definitely has gained the most market share. So the almost 50% of the quotes on Energy Sage include LG or Solar World. So and consumers are actually asking them, starting to ask them uh, for these, these kind of products. So there are 46 brands, but top five almost control 75% of all the, uh, of, the, of the volume on Energy Sage. 26 inverter brands and just Solar Edge and Enphase combined are included in. One slide for a second. I've got a question. So 
marketplace total, commercial, residential only. This is mostly residential. All right. This is Energy Stages Marketplace. Yes. Oh, not the market. Yeah, there's some major brands that just don't even show up or fall into the other category. Yeah. So I was just curious as to how we got the ones that we have. Yeah. No, it's, it's a big list. It's 46 different brands who are marketing. Uh, so on the inverter side, even more consolidated market with Enphase and Solar Edge and SMA, as you can see, they just their market share really collapsed over the last uh, couple of years. We also ask, and I, uh, how many panel brands actually do you carry? Actually, we don't ask. We actually see how many panel brands each installer offers for their quotes. Uh, most of them seem to be carrying up to three. Three seems to be the the number they they'll quote on three different brands in their quotes. Uh, similarly for inverters, actually a little bit more uh, consolidated here, almost 80% of them will carry three or less. This was an interesting uh, data that we published last time for the first time is basically we looked at the different panel and inverter combinations and where their prices were. So the cheapest price was Canadian Solar plus Solar Edge. So we used them as the base, and sorry, it's a little bit hard to read, and we said, what are the other pairings, and what are they, how do their prices compare to Canadian plus Solar Edge? And I would love to actually hear from you if you see any surprises here. Um, Solar World and Enphase is about 7% more expensive. LG plus Solar Edge is actually 9% more expensive. Sun yep. Exactly. So. No, this is retail. This is what the installers are quoting the end consumer. So one thing that we got out of this is maybe we, we have this data, maybe we can share that with our solar installation partners. <coughs> say, hey, what, what is the right price? I think there is a lot. This industry has been very opaque for a very long time. And I think some of this data actually shows that there is a need for more transparency in the industry. Part of that is because I've used the Energy Sage portal through a lot of leads. And I think because it's so blind when you're going in to prevent any of the lead, you're throwing your best of the best at the, at the medium price. So mm -hmm. this way you could get it through. So that's what's kind of making that inaccurate because like you're, you're saying, hey, I'm gonna take it. You're paying X amount of dollars for your lead, right? And you're saying, how am I gonna turn this lead over? So you end up saying, LG and Enphase, and you go into that lower end pricing, so that's what's making it lower. When you go into the higher end panels, people are like, oh, well, let me just throw in a lower end Suniva panel and just hope for the best because I'm just gonna put it in a higher. It's someone that's not savvy with the portal. Yeah. Um, but but <coughs> that, I think that's why the trend is, is lower on the lower end on this side. Yeah, that is a very counterintuitive. When you have, you have less expensive panels on the higher price. Exactly. You have, so, I, the that, that's, does that just suggest, like, Hanwha panels are not, you know, um, so you've got, you've got something that, that I can price identically to Canadian Solar and Solar Edge. Um, so either, it, it, it makes no sense. So. I, I think for me the takeaway is um, there's a lot of different pricing behavior in the market. Not that this is how pricing should look for any reason, but that, um, and, and probably uh, to, to your point, there's, there's different utilization of Energy Sage's platform Correct. also. But I think what it, what it, yeah, absolutely, I think there are different behaviors and you can keep digging and digging and maybe we can do this analysis. Internally, we look at by county level and by state level to see how these prices are behaving. And, uh, but our installation partners are actually asking for, could you give us some insight as to what is the market prices in a particular market? With that Hanwha Solar Edge number, is somebody who's decided to increase their gross margins? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that looks like to me. <laughs> just a quick question. Uh, maybe it's coming up. Just, uh, is there, is there, do you have like one installer or, or a couple of, or, or a handful of installers that, that really account for a lot of these uh, bids that are going in? Yeah, so we have a network of roughly 400 uh, and change, maybe 420 I think at this point. About 120 of them are super, super active. Um, and then another 100 of them are 
moderately active, and then you could you could see the tail there. So yeah, it may be representing the maybe a 200 or so installers uh, data. Is this quoted or sold? This is quoted. They all said no to the proposal. <laughs> Uh, my last slide, I think, is um, this is a word cloud. This is on Energy Sage consumers and installation companies exchange messages, just like LinkedIn. So we did a quick say, saying which words are coming up more often. No surprise here, the bigger the font, that is the word that is in that message the most. Learn more. People want to learn more, <laughs> right? These are questions consumers are asking. Panels, huge, huge in panels. Uh, roof, inverters, you can, you can look at this and you can draw your own conclusions. But there is, I think, a lot of appetite for more education, more information from the consumer. And what I can tell you is financing and equipment is definitely the focus of a lot of our uh, customers who are shopping. We see this a lot. Like when they get the quotes, install consumers are looking at three or four or five quotes on their screen. They're like, I like this installation company, they're local to me, I like the equipment package that this installation company is offering, I like the financing that the third person is offering, how can I now bring it together? So a lot of times we have to go back to our installation companies and communicate back and say, this is what the consumer is now leaning towards. What package can you bring to the table at this point? I don't see solar shingles up there. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. This, this, yeah, this, uh, it has been really good for solar, but really bad also, because what we are finding is that a lot of consumers are now holding back, waiting for the solar shingles. Yeah. Is that that we're filming Do you Universal see a Studios? spike when it's some <laughs> crazy announcement or dip? Yeah, absolutely. Huge, huge. We had a fourth quarter is usually quite slow for us. This year, not so, because Tesla solar shingles. <laughs> And that can last a week or? That can last, actually t Tesla sh solar shingles maybe lasted six weeks maybe. Do you actually see deals closing more after that or is it just like random interest? It's a random, we have to actually t talk the consumers into reality like because we don't, <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to stop here. More Q and A, more discussion. What did you, what did you find? Uh... Um, it seemed like um, in, in a number of your slides you talked about <coughs> with the commoditization of solar, particularly on the pricing and the equipment and visibility of pricing on equipment. Um, but the, I also noticed a, a quite a few trends um, around increasing um, services being offered by installers, going more into the O and O and M space. Um, and a focus on, from the consumer side, a lack of value of labor, right? They, it's all about price, it's all about product, it's not about labor. We know from the housing market that, that consumers don't typically value labor, it's all about product. Yeah. Commoditization is all about product and about price. Yeah. What do you think sort of the, the things for us to focus on um, in, in, in ramping up and making that service side more valuable in them? Yeah, so that's a, that's a, that's a great question. I think that's what we hear from solar installation companies that if you look at what's your competitive advantage, right? Higher quality installation to do with labor, more qualified labor, consultative sales process. For the consumer on the other side, this, is very, this can be very subjective. How do you communicate your value to the consumer that you do a good job? Your reviews, your recommendations, right? Um, recommended, yeah and prompt and responsive. So I think, and the warranty, it tells you, tell the consumer about, so you have to really quantify your value of your labor to the consumer, something that they can understand. With the equipment, they can understand what the value is. We actually give a panel rate, we give actually a qualitative ra uh, ranking to the different panel brands on our marketplace to help the consumer understand, is this a Mercedes or a, is it a Honda? Can I, can I just follow on to that? So if you look at the difference between what we think our value is yep. and, right. what the exactly. and what the consumers think yep. they want, are, I'm wondering <laughs> if the, the whole idea of an online consumer marketplace for this 
automatically biases the, the, the consumer to be the price consumer. In other words, uh, are we not point. looking at the whole range of um, solar consumers? So the last thing, I mean, we have a, uh, the last thing we, we, we've ever let our, we don't let anyone email a proposal. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely verboten. Because we know our close rates, if we just email a proposal, are, are like next to nothing. Um, if, you know, if our guys can actually sit down you know, with a customer, we close. So I've been yeah. highly reliable. It's not, that's not the new concern. concern. Um, and I, I'm wondering if the information you're giving us is, is biased towards the, the, the <coughs> specific consumer who's going to use the tool. So this is not all, as I mentioned, this is not all from our uh, platform. So this is our installer survey. Most of these installers are networks of, as I mentioned, Beva, Calcia, Enphase, et cetera. This is a big ticket purchase. Think about yourself as a consumer. How would you, would shop, how would you shop for solar? I think SolarCity tried to do that, where they would basically try to get to the consumer first, and they were spending hundreds of millions of dollars to do that get you on the phone or get you in person. I actually had Direct Energy send somebody to my house unannounced to basically do a pitch. It's, so yes, that, that's true. I'm not even, I, I actually, I'm not arguing that slot because I'd much rather come, come in after Solar City. Because God for, I mean, it makes yeah. my life so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Let's I mean, it's like, going, you know, knocking down bowling yeah. it's, uh, you know, with, with just, uh, you know, so, I would be very, you know, we're very happy to come in number two or number three. I'd love to have that, that customer who said, I better call my local guy and see what they said. Um, and we've done those jobs. But I'm not doing those jobs if I never get in the door. If I'm, if I'm you know, four or five or six quotes electronics, I'll never have a true platform to really uh, gain someone's trust, uh, show our local knowledge, show our quality. Um, those kinds of things. No, absolutely, those are very, very valuable. I think what we, are, what we are sharing with you is what we hear from consumers and what we hear from solar installation companies. I think consumers want choice and transparency, right? And yes, you can always control. I think you can always close a few sales by holding back information and giving it to the consumer at the right point based on what you believe, right? And you're successful, that's fine. How, what would it take for you to now multiply that business by 5x or 10x, right? If you look at Australia, Australia has 10 times more solar installations per capita. We are doing 300,000 or so installations a year. Can we get to 3 million a year? How do we scale that up? How do we fatten that sale, broaden and fatten that sales funnel? That's, I think, one of the points that we are raising that what are the options that we should be thinking about? You mentioned in one of the slides earlier that, you know, I think I forget the percentage of the people that are on your marketplace ended up going not with the cheapest price. Yeah. So what, was, what did you find? Was there, what was the reasons why they didn't go with the cheapest price? Was it, you know, was it the company? Was it the Absolutely. The consumers make decisions on several, several fronts. And actually, I would, uh, to one of your questions, there is actually less commoditization. If you can help the consumer understand that this is a better quality equipment package, and a better quality installer. Consumers are actually willing to pay more. We are actually, as, and our quotes are actually uh, pointing to that. Like they, if we were just about price, you would not see, you would actually see some of the other names being really big, right? This actually tells you that there's a flight to quality. The consumers are really, they want to understand. We have been able to quantify the quality of these panels and inverters. But how do we do that for solar installation companies? We're looking for some input there also, and really differentiate. So uh, just thinking out loud here, you know, if you can't close in the, in the home if you're having a hard time online, we're probably not good as an industry of marketing online. That's not our strength, right? And so if you look at the, think of us as consumers, Macy's just closed doors, JC Penney just closed doors. We want to buy things online. And as an industry, I think we have to learn how to differentiate ourselves at a local level online to get people to buy from us online. And that's not our strength. You know, our strength is entrepreneurial growth. 
compete with the home, you know, local. So I think as local installers, we have to get better at that. And I think you sharing information with us and us utilizing, you know, your tools and that feedback will help us as locals. Yeah, and these are mostly thought-provoking. These are not, uh, we, that's why we try to usually not say what the trends are. In our reports, you'll see we never really call out what we believe is happening. We, we are giving you raw data and you can decide. And that's what I try to do here is triangulate a lot of third party research, our research, our marketplace activity to say if this is what you were seeing, what would you take away and how would you address your business going forward? Sorry, there was. Okay. I, I would just note that uh, what we were using at our DC is we have a different strategy you know, for pricing uh, products that we typically have. If the source came in via a website lead or you know, some kind of marketing strategy, but I think that, that um, energy lowers our cost of customer acquisition because it's, you shoulder some of those costs to, to get the customer there. So I think we've been more successful on energy saving when we recognize that it's, it's a different channel. And there's never going to be a silver bullet, right? There's never going to be all sales online, all sales offline. I think it's always going to be a mix of channels. This is more of just a suggestion with the, the portal. What I would like to see is because like when you, let's say I was getting 100 leads a month, right? And then you would lose some of the leads because obviously it could get chosen. It would be nice if the consumer was able to do some sort of survey at the end on why they chose that other installer, lower price, this, 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 and then it sends out to the other three contractors that had it. So this way you could understand where you're kind of in a focal point because I think you're correct on the fact that with the Pick My Solars and the Power Scouts and everybody coming out, it's solar on your own terms. And in order for us as contractors, which are benefiting from using your service, we want to be able to know yes. where, where is our downfall? Am I overpricing? Did I put subject to too many times? Did it, you know, my, was my warranty just too low? Absolutely. I think that's, that's a great point. We tested some of these reports last year, but we are investing quite a bit more this year to make sure we can give that kind of feedback on a real-time basis so you know how to do adjustment. We are actually thinking of giving some guidance on what packages are selling better in your market, what are the price ranges and stuff like that. Not actuals, but maybe quartiles or things like that. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I, you, know you approached us at one point, and I decided not to get involved in these products. This is a marketplace. But, and it might be a great marketplace on its own, and it is, as someone else said, a different channel that we have to gear towards if that's where we want to go. What I'm very concerned about or curious about <coughs> is have you ever had your studies audited by some third party company that's a blind order to say, yes, this is the industry, because you, you, you're trying to tell us this is what the industry is doing. Yeah. But is it really what the industry is doing? Has, the only way you do that is to have a blind audit. We're actually, um, we share our data with some of the most prestigious organizations in the country, like NREL and uh, the DOE and number of universities, uh, and they have published data uh, and their research based on our data. Uh, there's one other report that we're expecting in the next few weeks, uh, which will be very, very powerful. So I understand, I exactly know what, what you're saying. Uh, don't, don't believe data blindly, right? We have seen what happens in the last few months. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so absolutely. Uh, we are very cautious, uh, and we have built this platform being my goal has always been make it more transparent. I think transparency will help the industry. It will reduce consumer skepticism. We hear this from a lot of consumers. I want information. We launched actually two products. Uh, check it out. One is our calculator. Our conversion rates from that calculator to consumers signing up and going solar is phenomenal. Uh, consumers who sign up without using the calculator, much lower. We, just we have another tool which shows consumers who's shopping around your neighborhood and what kind of economics are they seeing for solar? That tool, since we have launched, our registration rate has gone up three to four times. Consumers are hungry for data. That's what we are finding. And they, they get attracted to data. And think about us as consumers, which may not be that big a surprise, but this industry has been so opaque for so long. Uh, but our belief is more transparency will really broaden the market reach. Uh, and we should be doing 3 million installations, not 300,000 installations a year.
that's we're hoping. You had a slide up there that had uh, the seven reasons why <coughs> consumers chose the installer. Yeah. Do you conversely have uh, another slide in there that says the reasons why they didn't specifically choose the installer? Mm. Yeah. Um, we don't have that slide per se. It's yeah. We we yeah. I think uh, there's a mix of this, a little bit of this, but I think most. I don't have specifically that data. I think price definitely play, play, plays in there, affordability, uh, confusion. This solar is really, st people are still very skeptical, right? When you say solar can produce this kind of returns, your payback could be seven years or less. A lot of consumers' first question in their mind is if this is true, why is solar not everywhere, right? And they're like, I must not know something, or they're not telling me something. Uh, home values go up. The industry keeps saying, yeah, if you install solar, home values go up. We hear a lot of skepticism from our consumers to say, prove it to me, show it to me. How, how is that possible? Again, they want more proof, more data, right? Right, but here, that, that's a perfect example. Here in New Mexico, home, home values don't increase because of solar being installed. I mean, it's, it's a realtors, and it actually almost devalues the home from all the realtors I've talked to. Now, for some reason, it does cause them to sell faster. But what is the national average on that? On you know, does it increase home values in, in other portions of the, of the country? Yeah, there have been several studies by, again, very prestigious organizations that have data on that that suggest. Localized. Yes. It's very localized. So San Diego, you're going to have a very different situation than in the Bay Area and in the Central Valley. They think it's very, very localized, and it comes down to exactly what you're talking about. It's the relationships with the realtors and how they're positioning it to the clients that they're working with trying to sell them. Yeah, education of the realtors. We do, we do a lot of realtor education and knowledge of, you know, from being a real estate broker in the past. Like we understood where to get to that point. And by adding a fixture in anything in real estate, whether it's floors, a toilet, whatever, it's always going to increase the value. You just have to make sure that that perceived value isn't an overabundant. Like some people say, oh, you're going to get a $30,000 solar system. It's going to increase your value $30,000. No, it's not. Probably 10 to 15%. But I'll take 10 to 15% over 30 on $30,000 any day. So it just makes, it's just that. Uh, Zillow, Zillow reached out to us and I think a couple of other online realtors are basically telling us that consumers are, one, a number of homes with solar are being listed and shoppers are actually looking for more energy efficient and solar powered homes. So it's, it's happening, it's, we are, it's still a small industry, right? One and a quarter million in solar installations. But in the long term, I think that's gonna become a bigger part of the story. Uh, so more data we have on that, that will help us. Thank you everyone, appreciate it.